Hello all and welcome to the latest Craft Mania Sunday Showcase. I'm Jamie and I'm going to be with you today to introduce you to some amazing brand new products. Now over the last couple of weeks we've had some fantastic offers on some really lovely paper pads which of course have sadly now come to an end as we embark on a brand new showcase. But today we have some amazing new ones to share with you that having watched the last couple of weeks, I have a feeling these will sell out and sell out very quickly. So if you like the look of the paper pads we're gonna share with you today, do get ordering them as quickly as you can. On top of our paper pads, we're gonna start by looking at them shortly, but on top of them, we also have a brand new collection of dies as well. And uh, they're really, really beautiful. And when we put them all together and actually get crafting with them, we've made some lovely samples for you. I've actually got slightly carried away this week. I think I've made about 15 different projects to hopefully show you a few ideas of what you could create with these and give you a bit of inspiration. Now, if you are new to our videos and you haven't found us before, firstly, welcome. And secondly, how today's video is going to work is I'm going to show you all of these different products. If you do wish to order them, we're going to have a code on every item. The code is good if you wish to order via phone to one of our stores, such as Craft Mania and Great Yarmouth or Beaches and Cream in Lowestoft. If you wish to order via text message or if you wish to order on any of our social media platforms, such as YouTube, Facebook, Instagram or Twitter, if you can just quote that code number, we'll know the item that you're on about and it saves us getting a bit confused. Equally, if you wish to, you can order everything I'll be sharing with you today on our website. And on there, once again, you can either click and collect from Craft Mania in Great Yarmouth or Beaches and Cream in Lowestoft, or we can send these items to you anywhere in the world, literally anywhere. It doesn't matter where. We'll chat more about how all of the postage works later and, of course, how all the UK postage works as well. Um, but we literally dispatch and send anywhere in the world. So, with no further ado, let's jump in and have a look at these items and see if they're ones that you're all really going to be tempted with and want to order. So, our first one today is P1. Now, this is a 5x5 five five paper pad. Now, if you did get the last set of these pads that we had on offer over the last couple of weeks, you won't have seen a 5x5 five five one. This is a new size pad for this collection. We did have one in a set many, many months ago, so you may have already had one before. But if you're basing it on the last set we show you, this is a new format. So a 5x5 five five pad in here, you get loads. You actually get 80 different sheets. Or not different, but 80 sheets in total. There are 10 different designs. Uh, they're all 5 inches by 5 inches and they're printed on 160 GSM paper. So, or cardstock really. It's got a nice weight. It's, it's a bit too thick to be paper, but not quite thick enough to class it as card. So, I've, I've popped one of each of them out anyway to show you your 10 different designs to save me flicking through the book. So, as you can see, we've got some lovely verses on these. Uh, this is more of a versy style pad. So, we've got Life is Full of Beautiful things now of course although we call this one a versi pad the good bit is, is if you wanted to pop a die cut in here or if you wanted to actually cut that out or pop a decoupage over the top of it or a stamped image maybe layered on there you certainly can do so if you don't want to use the word in great ways to cover them up and disguise them and then you've got these really nice square elements instead we've then got for a wonderful person uh, it's the friends we meet along the way that help us appreciate the journey. That's a lovely one, isn't it? And these are going to tie in really well with all of the pads I'm going to be showing you shortly as well. We've then got nice just picture ones as well. So if you do want to pop these on the top of boxes maybe, or actually as the front of your cards, you could do. And the good bit, of course, and I'm going to waffle on about this quite a bit today, but because you're getting multiple of the designs, if you wish to, you could layer them. You could cut bits out of them and actually layer them up. Things like this, if you've got a bit of time and you, you like your fussy cutting you could cut them out and turn them into borders or use them as corners on your card you don't have to keep them on the paper they come actually attached to um, lots of ways we can transfer the, transform these into different shapes and sizes and styles another nice background one here a bit fuller so if uh, you do just want to use that as the front of your card you certainly could I really like a lot of these versi ones for your inserts as well I often struggle uh, I say this quite often I like to make really elaborate fronts of my cards then when it comes to the insert bit I struggle a bit more on what to pop on it and these I think are great because especially if you do go with the other pads we're going to be looking at today you might want to complement the, the outside bits you're going to be using from them with these on the inside now of course they're all nice and flat but I also wanted to show you these these are ones I've just added a bit of glitter to now I have got a bit sparkly today and I'm probably sure I'm quite confident that I too look a bit like a disco ball because I've had a bit of a battle with glitter and I just can't get rid of it I've been taken over by it today and uh 
it's everywhere. But it's a really nice way to dress the papers up a bit further if you want to. Of course, there's many other techniques you could do with them as well. But I do like a bit of glitter on these. I just think it really sets them off. So I've done a few of the papers as we go through and I'll be showing you a few of them along the way. But that was your first pad. So your order code for that one is P1. Price wise, it should be 5 99 but it is reduced to just £5 and 9p for this week and this week only. Now, don't forget all of the offers I share with you today will be ending at 5 pm on Saturday, the 30th of March 2019. So do get in as quickly as you can do. If you are watching this after then, don't worry, we may still have these items in stock, but they will be back up to their recommended retail price. So get them on offer and save a few pennies while you can. Moving on, we'll look at P2. Now, P2 is our 6x6 pad. These are always very popular because they're the perfect size for the front of your cards. You don't have to cut them about if you don't want to. A nice 6x6 card is a lovely size to work with. Your recommended retail price for this pad should be 3 99 but it is reduced on offer to just £3.39p. Now, in this pad, we are going to get 36 sheets in six different designs. I'm back to all my sixes again. I always struggle with sixes, so I apologise already for my mistakes, which will, I'm sure, happen. Uh, this is one of your papers. As you can see, really lovely floral design. Perfect as your backings, especially when we're going to pop them behind them. Nice topper bits from the first pad. We then have a nice frame set. Again, if you're thinking of inserts, really lovely to be able to pop something in the middle of there, your actual sentiment. And of course, again, having multiple sheets, these are going to be perfect for layering once more. I've actually done this. You're going to get to see this in a bigger format shortly on one of my cards, but there's just so much that you could really layer them up quite a lot if you want to. This one I think is really pretty as well. And of course, with a lot of these, you can use them as a, a sort of portrait design or a landscape design, whichever direction you wish to. Uh, you could really play about with that as well. You don't have to just use them as the format that come out of the book. Another really lovely floral one. And I really like the way it's got sort of a, a bubbly lattice style design to the back of it. You're going to really appreciate the way they've designed these papers. There is just so much detail to them. They look very expensive. Yet, um, actually, when you look at them price per sheet, work out incredibly good value. Then we have another one of our floral backgrounds. Again, really, really pretty. And the colours in these are just beautiful. So that one, of course, was P2. That's your 6x6 pad. Should be 3 99 but reduced to just £3.39p. Moving on, we have P3. Now, this one is your 7x7 pad. It should be 4 99 but this time it is reduced to £4.24p. Now, the 7x7 pads, because of the 6x6 we looked at a moment ago, when we get into the next couple, we've also got an 8x8, which works on the same formula as the 6x6, and a 12x12 that works the same as the 6x6. So with them three, we're going to have the same designs, but the design just um, magnifies as such as the bigger the sheets go. So I'll get to talk more to you about that in a minute when we look at them. But the 7x7s are lovely because these are actually more of a frame design. So that basically they've left the, the middle part pretty plain on the majority of these. So again, if you do want to pop something else in the centre of them or use them for scrapbooking, of course, or any other item that you want to do with them, you can. Or, of course, you can pop in your other papers. So if we just grab these at random, they're not the best colour combo, but you can see quite quickly, because we're always stacking up in sizes, you can stack up in sizes with your other papers, and you're going to have different designs. It's not always going to be the same ones, like when you've got the 6x6, the 8x8, and the 12x12. So, of course, we've got our 5x5 one, we've got our 6x6 one, and then the 7x7 pad that we're looking at this time. Now, once again, in this one, you get 36 sheets, and there are six designs in here once more. So there's your first one. Then we've got this really lovely one. And you're going to notice, again, that we've got that nice sort of circular lattice part going on in the background. It's got a nice underlying tone through them. Then got this one. I love this sort of light green shade that's going on with these. I think that's beautiful. Then we've got a nice real pink one going on instead. And then a nice lilac-y blue one. And then we've got another green one. And again, what I like with this is you'll notice quite quickly that you actually get two pink designs, two purpley designs, and two green designs. So again, you're going to have a lot of options of layering and uh, working in conjunction with each other and a nice sort of amount spread out through the book. It's not one colour heavy. You're really going to be able to share that about a bit. So that, of course, is your 7x7 pad. P3 for the code. Should be 4 99 but reduced to just £4.24p. 
Moving on, we have P4. Now, on our last collection, our butterfly collection that we released a couple of weeks ago, the 8x8 eight eight set was the most popular. So I do warn you now, I have a feeling that this one will repeat that and we will go very, very quickly out of stock on this one. So your 8x8 eight eight pad should be 8 99 but this one is reduced to just £7.64p. Now, in with this, is actually a kit. It's not just a pad. In here, let's dig in a bit. Not only do we receive our 8x8 pad, which again is a really nice chocker 36 sheets pad, we also get lots of topper bits. Now these are die cut, so they're going to pop out nice and easily. You can see they've already been pre-cut. Now I have a nice weight card stock as well, so they're the good quality. And as you can see, you get some really lovely sentiments on here. I especially like the happy birthday one, but they're all good. And a bit like I said earlier, even if there is something you're not too sure about, you could easily cover up the bits that you don't want to see of your wording and pop something else over the top of them. But they're lovely, really. So as you can see, we're going to get a few sheets of that one. So so that's nice because if you're going to want quite a lot that matches so we've got four of them in total then we move on to your squares so this time we've got die cut square elements again we've got these really lovely floral edges and then nice wording going through the middles of them as well also on the side of these they've used this area to add in a couple of little um, sentiment parts these aren't die cut but you can easily snip them out if you want to use them too and i quite appreciate that because they're trying to basically use every part of the page up because you're paying for this so it's nice to be able to use it for a reason so these are quite a nice little addition to them again and the same with your circles you're actually going to receive four sheets of those as well so eight die cut sheets in total are going to be in with that pad now your pad is exactly the same as your six by six but we've increased our size so these are your same designs again so i'm going to flick through them quite quickly but this is what i was saying earlier actually let me show you this one so this is your six by six one this is your eight by eight one but as you can see they've literally magnified the design which i actually think can look quite nice and quite expensive if you layer these on on one card and break it up obviously with a couple of other layers i think that can look quite a quality look to have the different sizes go through it um, i think it can really look quite smart there's another one and then let's carry on flicking this one i think is lovely I really like that, especially they're a bit bigger because you get to see that nice latticey style work in the background. Then we've got that nice border one again, nice plain polka dots, and of course some more flowers as well. And then the other bit I wanted to mention from this set is the waist part of your die cut toppers. Now I'm not going to show you it to you again because we, we did this on our last time that we released one of these, the butterfly um, pad collection. I will link that video by the way in the description to this one so if you haven't seen it yet it might be a good idea to watch that because it will give you some good inspiration of what you can do with these as well but on that on that video i actually made a scrapbook page and cut these out into squares and use these as actual picture frames of course you don't have to use them just for scrapbooking again they could be quite nice for different topper bits and uh, insert bits and parts for your cards but they are really nice frames for scrapbooking so you could use them for that as well so that completes your 8x8 pad kit. So that, as I said earlier, should be £8.99, but is reduced to just £7.64p. And your code for that one is P4. Moving on, we have P5. Now, this is your 12 by 12 pad. Again, these were surprisingly popular in the last collection. So again, I would warn you to get in quick with these two. These are only £7.99, and our offer price this week is £6.79p. Now, I can actually say, I haven't mentioned this yet, I have seen these style of pads or same brand of pads in a few very popular places and we are considerably cheaper. Uh, this pad I actually see the other day and it was retailing for £9.99 and we we're only £6.79. So again, price wise, really good prices on this collection. So a good time to get in and get them, especially while they're on offer and saving even more. So a bit like I mentioned earlier, same with your 8x8 and 6x6, same designs, just a bigger, bolder format. Now these I actually think are really lovely for your cards. You're going to get to see a lovely card I've made with this one shortly, and it is the 12x12 size I've used. Same designs once again, so we're going to quick flick through these and uh, show you all of them ones. I quite like the polka dots as well, I think there's quite a lot you could do with that. But I have actually, this is, this is a bit naughty. I've got a bit glittery again. I did warn you I was going to show you a few of these. This I think is lovely. So this is just again with a quickie glue pen and some iridescent glitter going across the top and the bottom and highlighting the details of the flowers. So that's that one. I wish I had done this on the card that I'm going to show you shortly. Um, 
but it's good for you to see that you can do that if you wish to if you do like the look of the card and then this one is obviously one of our big bold ones now again i think this one's really lovely layered you're going to get to see an 8x8 version of this layered shortly but it's just again really really sparkly with the glitter and would make a perfect um, box maybe or you could use it actually for scrapbooking again i know i keep going on about it but when we did the uh, the last version of these pads the butterfly collection i made a big wooden box i know a lot of you were quite taken by that one these would be really lovely to if you wish to do a different version of the box especially if you was to add a bit of glitter in here and there i think you're going to really make something quite incredible with them so again you might want to look back at that video if you haven't seen the box yet so moving on to our next item this is of course an essential if you're going to go for your pads you're going to need matching colors of card now I, one of the bits i absolutely love with this company is that they do the matching card so many times i get paper pads and i want to match them colors that you're getting in your, in your papers and you just can't match them nothing ever really matches up truly there's always a bit of a shade difference and i hate it it really aggravates me because there's just so many colors in the world and it's really hard to get matching well with this company they're really good they will actually give you a matching set of paper or cardstock so you can purchase that and coordinate along really well so this is p6 for your codes it's your a4 card pack it should be 5.99 but your offer price for this is just five pounds and nine p now in here you're going to get 24 sheets of card there's actually eight colors and i've laid them out going across here just so you can get a little glimpse of what you're going to get in there uh, they're just so beautiful and they are going to match in perfectly with all your different papers actual weight for this set of card is 200 gsm so it's quite a thin card i'm not going to lie to you you're not going to make your boxes or your card blanks out of this um, it's a bit weak for that, but it is really lovely card to layer with. It's great for die cutting. And to be honest, when I've been die cutting with it, I am using an electronic machine, but I'm actually cutting two levels at once. So sometimes using thinner card can benefit you in other ways as well. And of course, it's not going to weigh too much on your card either if you are going to use multiple layers underneath all your different sizes. Because when you get into stacking your 5x5s five five and your 6x6s six six and your 7x7s seven seven and your 8x8s, eight eight, you don't want it to become too much of a heavy card, do you? So that, again, is quite a nice ability with that card stock. So just to recap, that is your P6 A4 card pack. Should be 5 dollars but only £5.09. p. Now, if you're in love with this collection, and who could blame you if you are? I truly am absolutely head over heels with this one. Why not buy our bundle? So your bundle will give you one of everything we've just had a little look through. It gives you all of the pads and one pack of the card as well. The recommended retail price for this collection is £37.94p, but you can have it on our offer price this week of just £29.99. Now, of course, this is a bit more expensive to the Butterfly collection that we released a couple of weeks ago. But don't forget, we have added in your 5x5 pad. So if you're thinking there's a, a price jump, that is the reason why you are getting an extra pad in comparison to that one. Again, I know I'm like a broken record, but I will warn you, I think these will go very, very quickly. Um, so please do keep an eye on the Facebook page for when we're giving you stock warnings and order as soon as you've seen the video if it's something you want to get because I don't want you to miss out. Now then, let's tempt you with a few dies to go with that collection, shall we? So firstly, we have die seven. So D7 for your order codes. This one is your flower spray. It should be 7 dollars but it's on offer this week for just £6.79. Now that will get you three different dies. So we have our big flower spray going around here, which is actually really good because it has little flower parts marked out on it when you actually cut it. So if you wish to, you can layer these beauties on top of them. Now, one of the bits I really like with this is they've actually put it all together on one die. I love it when they do this because I always fear I'd lose them if they were separate. So having it all on one panel is a bit of a bigger thing for me to keep hold of and hopefully not lose. Uh, they, of course, will layer perfectly on top of all of them bits if you wish to. Or, of course, you can use it flat. They then also give you a separate flower head. So if you do want to layer that on top of the big flower in the middle, you can do. Or, of course, you can use that as a separate entity to decorate around the rest of the card if you don't want to pop them on top of the border bits every time. So that one is D7, your flower spray. It should be $7.99, but it's on offer for just £6.79p. Then next up, we have D8. Now, this is your butterfly border die. This one should be 11 99 but it's on offer for just £10.19. And, and this one is really, really clever. I absolutely love this die set. 
So what we have in here is two edgeable dies. So by an edgeable, I mean that they have a blade running all the way around the outside of them, but there isn't one across this end part here. So when you cut into cardstock, it will stay on your cardstock. If you wish to cut it off, you can do quite easily, um, but if not, it will actually stay on the card. So if you want to pop these on the creases of your card blank so that this part comes up from behind the back of them, you can do or you can pop them round into a square to make up a nice big frame. Or of course, as I said, you can just snip it off. But the bonus with this set is that we get this lovely open butterfly. So these bits will all cut out as little windows. I'm gonna show you a cut out in a minute. And we have this one, which is gonna leave in all of these lovely details and actually emboss them for you. So to give you an idea, this is your open one, which is that one. I've only used a little bit of it here, by the way, I've cut it down shorter. But you've got your lovely open one cut out of some white cardstock. And then we have the lovely filled in one. Now with the filled in one, if you wish to, you can actually leave this in your die and ink through the holes on your die so that you end up with that really lovely contrasting colour. So I've done just a darker shade of purple over the top of my purple to get that really nice detailing on there. Then this die, your first one, the one with the open parts, will actually layer over the top of the one you've just cut. So you can glue that on and end up with this really lovely free tone butterfly. Now, of course, you don't have to use them like this. There is so many different ways you're going to be able to create different effects with this set. But this is one of the ways I really think it looks quite special. And now another good thing with these is it doesn't matter what way around you cut them. And I'm going to try and show you this with the dies and hope that this makes sense. You can cut them like we have there and pop the, the, positive, the front of them behind each other. Or you can actually cut them the other way, or, or not cut them, layer them, should I say, so that they're, I'll be able to explain this in better detail shortly, hopefully, but I've got one here. So they're basically a mirror image, so you can layer them in both directions. So if like this part, which is just a snip off of the card I'm going to be sharing with you shortly, you wish to have a nice front and back of the same die, you can literally layer them. So we've got the white one done here as our first cut, we then have that really lovely pink one popped behind it so that we've got the embossed element underneath the white one. And then on the reverse of it, we've done exactly the same again. So I've stuck, oh, come back you. So I've stuck another pink one and then another white one. So I've sandwiched them all together to make that perfect mirrored part. And the whole border works in the same way. So if you want to make a lovely double-sided element, you can do, which again gives you a lot more options of where you're going to be able to pop these and see them. I always hate with uh, an edgeable that the back of the card can look quite messy because there's nothing on it and you just see the back of the die cut. Well, with this, you could actually put the back, uh, a nice one on the back as well so that it's going to cover it up. On top of that, you also get this really lovely perforation strip as well. So again, if you do wish to pop that underneath here, it doesn't have a blade down the sides. It is literally, the blades are the circles themselves. So if you want to pop them underneath your borders and create some really nice pretty patterns with them, you can do. Or of course, you can use it completely separately as well to just make up borders or details. There are so many things you're going to be able to do with this set. Again, I think that's going to be a very popular one. That is your D8 butterfly border. Should be 11 99 but on offer for just £10 and 19p. Now the next one. Oh, I've got so many favourites today. I know it's going to be a really bad day to try and pick your items. This one is D9. It's your ornate rectangle. It should be 12 99 but it is on offer for just £11 and 4p. I love this one. I absolutely am head over heels in love with this. This is the actual filigree part. So if we actually look at the die, let's chat you through that first of all, shall we? We have an outside die, if I can get hold of them. I always do this and can never pick them up. We have the outside die. So this is just a single blade for you to actually cut the outside shape if you wish to. We then have this really lovely filigree part. Now this doesn't have a blade around the outside or the inside. So if you do want to cut it out of your card, you're going to need to use the outside layer. We then have this part, which is a really pretty like tab part. This again has a blade around the outside. So if you do wish to cut that out as a frame, you can do by popping that in there. And then that will cut out sort of as you see it. And then we also have this really lovely little oval that goes in the middle because there isn't a blade in the centre there either. So that will cut out as a solid. So if you do want to cut that out as a window again, you can pop that in there and that will cut that part out for you. So when we look at the cuts I've got for you to have a little look at, this is just that one. So just this popped on the card, sent through the machine, 
And that is the part that you're going to be left with, which I think is stunning. Absolutely beautiful. Now, I know it's a bit early to be talking about Christmas, but I think this would look really lovely in a nice gold pearl cardstock or maybe some mirror board as well. So today, obviously, we're in a very springy theme and very light and colours. But why not think ahead? Christmas isn't going to be far away in the card making world. It, of course, it's really good to also use as a landscape and a portrait. And I think this might be quite nice on your envelopes as well. Maybe somewhere to write the name of the person it's going to, perhaps. Or in your inserts with a nice sentiment stamped in the middle. Just so much you're going to be able to do with this set. The bit that cuts out the middle, by the way, this is how they look. So I've cut a few of them just to give you a bit of an idea. So a few different colours. Lots of things we can do with these, including tying them on with ribbons to make them look like really nice borders. I'll be able to show you that shortly. And then this little oval in the middle, you're going to hear lots about him today. Because I know he's just a little oval, but I love the little perforation part around the middle here. And he fits in so nicely with a lot of the other dies. So when we do get on to looking at the samples, I'm going to keep telling you I've used the oval from the ornate rectangle. This is the bit that I'm on about, pre-warning. This is another idea I come up with. I haven't really finished this off because I like the idea of making it as a Christmas, uh, not Christmas, sorry, as a table nameplate setting. Uh, again, could be nice for your Christmas table if you did different colours or Mother's Day's just around the corner. You might have a nice fancy dinner for that and wish to have some nice table settings for that. Um, but it's ever so easy. It's basically taking a die cut, as you can see here, I've layered the white one on top of some nice lilac cardstock and then I've folded it in half and popped in my piece of card to actually keep that up and then that will stand quite nicely. On the top here, I've used this lovely oval part, which is going to come out of die 11 when we get onto that in a minute. And then this, of course, is our lovely little oval from in this set that we're currently looking at. But I think you're going to love this. There's just going to be so many bits you're going to be able to do with this and so many ways that you're going to be able to create different things with these. So we'll try and set that back up there just so you can have a little look at it again as a set but that one is d9 your ornate rectangle should be 12.99 but is only 11 pounds and 4p so moving on we have d10 now this is your ornate square now again a lot like the last one we have lots of options with this one we have our outside blade we then have a really pretty part that hasn't got a blade on the inside of the outside so it can cut in and stay as a window if you wish to we then have another outside blade if you do wish to nest them up and cut it as a frame. And then we have a really nice sort of geometric style part for the centre if you wish to cut that part out as well. So again, lots of options for that one too. That of course is D10, your ornate square should be 12 99 but is on offer at only £11 and 4B. Moving on, we have D11. Now this is your ornate oval. Same price again, so it should be 12 99 but it's reduced to just £11 and 4p. This one's slightly different in the fact that the outer edge has this nice perforation detail to it. So it's going to create some really pretty panels as well. So you can just use that bit on its own, obviously. We then have a really nice outside edge again. So if you do want to cut that as a pretty frame, you can do. Then we have another one of them panels with no inside or outside edge. The actual swirls that this cuts out, the bits that you're going to sort of, by theory, throw away, are really pretty as well. They're quite nice little flourishy bits that you could add into your floral displays as well if you want to. We then have another, oh, come back, inside edge part. And we have another fancy part as well. So again, with that bit that I just threw away, very uncaringly, very unlovingly, you can create nice little topper parts with these two. Or you can, of course, nest them in there and create some really nice apertures. So again, so many options. I could keep waffling all day about the different ways you could use these. But that one is D11, your ornate oval. Should be 12 99 but just £11 and 4p. And then your last die is D12. This is your lattice frame. Again, this one should also be 12 99 but it's reduced on offer to £11 and 4p. But it's very much like the last ones we've been chatting about. We have that lovely outside edge. We then have the really nice filigree bit that doesn't have a blade on the outside or the inside. We then have a blade in the middle. So if you do want to cut that just as a frame, you can do really perfect for scrapbooking this one, isn't it? Again, really nice landscape or portrait. Lots you're going to be able to do with that. And then we have this really interesting panel. 
Now this has got a lot of uses because of course it doesn't have a blade around the outside. So if you do wish to, you could layer this lots of times across a piece of card and cut, make or create some really lovely lacy card. Or of course we can just use it with our outside edge that's in there to cut out really pretty panels. Or of course you can leave that out and cut that in the middle of there and have some really nice solid style lacy panels instead if you want. Again, so many options, so, so, so many options. And with this collection of dies, if you do go for the dies, I have a feeling you are gonna have hours upon hours upon hours of fun. So if you do wish to, why not buy all of your dies in one handy bundle? You've got the game now, haven't you? Bundle time. This will give you all six of your dies. Your code for this one is Mega Die Bundle. It'll give you all six in one easy click purchase. And of course, there is another little saving on this as well. So it works out cheaper than buying them individually. Your collection here should have a recommended retail price of £71.94p. But your offer price is just £57.99, which is lovely. It's such an incredible price for such gorgeous, versatile dies. You, the options and ways you're going to be able to use these are just endless. So, to tempt you even more, we've wet the appetite now, haven't we? We've hopefully by now convinced you you need the pads, convinced you you need the dies. Well, why not go for the whole super mega bundle? That will give you everything that we've been looking at today. So it's going to give you all of the pads, the cardstock as well, and all of your dies. The recommended retail price for the complete collection is £109.88. And your offer price for this collection is just 86 99 So really good saving this week. And I can't say enough, I can't stress enough, this is going to keep you playing around for hours upon hours upon hours. And especially when we do look at the pads, it's like, I'm, as I said earlier, I'm going to show you 15 different samples I've made today. I know not all of them use papers from the pads, but a fair share do. And I've got so much left. I really have got loads and loads more papers that I'm going to be able to use for a long time to come yet. So value for money wise, you really are going to be able to get an awful lot out of this collection. So then, no time like the present, let's jump in and have a look at a few samples, shall we? So this is my first card I wanted to share with you. So this is actually a seven by seven card that I've created into an easel, just a standard easel style card. I've used a lovely butterfly edger going across the bottom here, just as a bit of a detail. Of course, stacking the top layer in a nice oyster pearl. You're gonna see a lot of oyster pearl today, actually. Um, it's sort of the pearl card color that I've gone to of choice to work with all of these really lovely papers and cards from the pack. So, of course, oyster pearl, and then we've got that really lovely shade of card that is coming in your card pack as well. And then up here, die-wise, we've got quite a bit going on on this one, haven't we? We have got our lovely D9, that, which is the ornate rectangle, which, of course, as you can see here, I've cut that uh, using the lovely lacy bit, the outside and the inside frame. Then I've used just the outside and the inside line to cut a solid panel to back it on. And then I've layered my insert bit on the one below and then another one below that. So if we actually look at the side here, you can see there's three different layers to this one being built up, giving you all of them different options, which is one of the bits I really love with this brand of dies. So many times you can get other brands of dies that just give you like that, that filigree bit, not even this pretty, but a filigree bit. And then you're stuck with just having that one option with it. But because of these give you so many different layers and so many different parts, it opens up all of these options for you to create your layered effects with them and give you different ways to use them, which I love because it's giving you freedom to create different effects each time you use the same dies if you wish to. Down the side here, we of course have our lovely flower spray die. So this time you can see that I've layered on my different flowers. I've actually double stacked the flower in the middle to give it a bit more of a height. Uh, I've just used a ball tool to shape these, no clever tricks going on there but really, really pretty element. Your flower spray, by the way, is only £6.79p, and I think that's a really lovely part to have. Down here, of course, we have got that um, part that cuts out in out of this one, and I've tied it on just with some ribbon. I love using these little holes on the side to thread my ribbon through. And I've actually double stacked that one with an aperture in the middle, and then one solid one, and then I've used that lovely little oval to add my little sentiment on to the back bit as well. So that's card number one. 
Moving on, we have card number two. Now this one is an eight by eight card to give you an idea of size. I've gone for a few of my different papers again, or one of my different papers and some of the different card again from out of there. This one in here, I don't know how well you're gonna to get to see that, but that is actually cut out of that lovely uh, lattice style paper. It's actually the middle of the sheet because I cut my flowers and layered them for one of the other cards and I didn't want that lovely bit in the center to go to waste. So I've used it on here. Now with this card, what I wanted to try and show you is a, a more invertage style, but built up with some acetate. So I've taken my actual um, paper, I've glittered it all the way around the edges, obviously as you can see. I've then used the outside edge of my die to cut the hole into the, the paper. I've then put a sheet of acetate underneath it so it's solid. And then I've layered on just a frame edge. So this is the, obviously the outer edge that's cut um, the hole. And then I've put the inside edge in it as well. And of course the outer edge has the dots attached to it. So it's made me this really nice little frame element going around the side here. I've then just used the next one down in the set, the one that doesn't have a blade around the side of it to make a, a solid piece. And then I've used the inner blade again to cut that part out and the filigree part to cut this bit. And then on the next level down, as we step down into our little tunnel effect, this cream one underneath here, that of course is just using the nice filigree part and uh, leaving it actually in the card. So not using the outer blade that we've used on the lilac, just leaving it in the card. And then of course, underneath all of that, we have the really lovely plummy style card, which of course is our back layer to the card as well. So this piece is the same sheet as what's out here. It's just been layered onto that to give you the effect. Then our little oval in the middle here, that's our lovely little oval that I'm going to keep going on about. That isn't obviously from our oval die set that we're looking at on this card, um, but it's a really lovely one to pop in the middle of there. It does actually have a smaller oval sort of solid part on the middle of that die, but I wanted a bit bolder area for me to stamp my sentiment, so hence I added that in the middle there. Hopefully that made sense and you like the look of that one. Then moving on, we go to this card. So this time this is a six and a half by an eight and a half card to give you an idea of size. Again, I've really gone to town using my ornate oval, which is D11. And as you can see, I've stacked this one on quite a few different layers once more to try and alternate between the lovely oyster pearl card and the really lovely lilac cards that you're gonna get in that card pack. I've then added some of my bigger flowers. You're gonna see these down here. That's off of the flower spray, that single flower. And then these bits which are coming out are actually off cuts of the flower spray. You don't have to keep it as one solid panel. So I've just cut the ends off and sort of changed direction so it looks a bit more of a V to fill the aperture part of my die cut and uh, added the flowers in on there. And then of course on the outside bits, we've got the same flower spray die and I've added on a different contrast in color and stacked them once again to give you a bit of a different effect. The best wishes, by the way, we haven't spoke about these, but on a lot of my cards today, you're gonna get to see the different wordings. They're ones we launched on, um, was it last week or the week before showcase, but they're still in stock. Obviously the offers have ended, but there's a few different word dies that are in stock and they're very good value. So you, it's not a big stumble to get, but I just really love the way they look and uh, the ability to tie your colors in so nicely. Sometimes I think stamping when you've done a lot of dye work can be a bit of a harsh coloring instead where these lovely word dies, you can cut them out the same color cardstock and get a really nice matching effect. So moving on to our next one. So this one is six by seven and a half inches is the actual size to the card. This time I've created like a box effect with a little uh, flap over the top to make it into a frame style. I've dropped an embossing folder in the back here, glued it in place. Before doing that, I actually went over it with a couple of colours of the opal gilding polishes to give it a bit of a marbled effect. I've also done the same technique over my flowers as well and on my butterflies just to give them sort of a two or three tone effect. But you can really play with them. Let one colour sort of dry before you go on with the next one and build up your colours a bit. If you haven't seen the opal polishes, by the way, we did a lovely video on them about a month ago now, I suppose, maybe longer. Again, I'll pop the link for that one in the description to this video. So if you haven't seen the opal polishes, you might want to treat yourself to that one. But again, I warn you, it could be a bit of a tempting video because there's so much you're going to be able to do with them. You're going to love them too. I've also, of course, used them on my little best wishes sentiment that's popping out the top of this card as well. But really, why we're looking at this one is all about this dye in here. I've kept it to my one colour of my oyster pearl and I've gone for that lovely ornate square design, which is D10, which of course is on offer at only £11.04p. 
And then we're going to move on to our next one. So the next card is seven and a half by seven and a half is your actual uh, card blank size for this card. I've got another one of my papers, which I've added a bit of glitter to. I told you it's been a very sparkly day today, isn't it? Lots and lots of glitter going on. I've then used that outside, um, not the outside one, sorry, the filigree part to my lattice frame. And I haven't used the outside blade, so it actually stays in my paper. I have used the inside blade, so it cuts a nice deep um, opening, a nice aperture part. I've then added a piece of oyster card underneath it, also using that same blade on it, that same die cut, so that I could pop that underneath and get the oyster show through on this level. I've then used that really lovely lattice part and actually kept it in the card and put that underneath in the right place. So you see the nice lattice work come through the opening on that one. I've then used the flowers and a couple of the little end cuts off of our lovely flower spray dye D7 just to make up corners as well because I really wanted to get the idea that you don't have to use that just as a bar you really can manipulate it round it might also look quite nice round ovals and uh, circle aperture cards and bits like that because it's got that nice sort of natural curve to it so you could really shape that one to be quite a nice a sort of finishing touch to lots of different cards really We've also got the Just For You wording. I was chatting about those a moment ago, weren't I? But this is another version of that for you as well. And uh, that sort of completes that card, really. Moving on, we have another one. This one is six inches by eight and a quarter, is your sizes this time. I've gone back to using my really lovely ornate rectangle die, which is D9. And again, I've stacked it. Now, I don't think you're going to get to see this very well on camera, but I've actually alternated my colours. So I've got two different shades of the purple. So I've got the sort of darker purple and the nice lilac card. Um, both in that card pack. No, I haven't added anything colour wise to that. They're just two of the different shades from in that pack. And when I've done my die cut, I've used the darker one to go underneath my top panel and then the lighter one down on the base panel here. And then on my flower parts around the side, the top flowers are done out of the lighter colour and the actual full on flower spray has been cut out of the darker colour to try and give you a bit of a contrast between shades, but nothing too harsh. You'll also might notice that underneath here, popping out from the top and the bottom of my ornate uh, rectangle, is the ornate oval. Because I just wanted to show you that you could stack them underneath if you want to, just to add in a bit more of a filigree effect coming out of there. I haven't cut it about, that is just it laid in perfectly on its own. And then the next card, now this one's another beast of a creation, this one. Now, you may remember that for the last couple of weeks, if you do watch a lot of my videos, that we've been doing a card fold where we've been using one side of it that layers up perfectly to create that style of effect. And we've done those on a couple of different videos over the last part, couple of weeks. And even a couple of you have been making these and popping them on our Sunday Showcase Shares group on Facebook, which has been really lovely to see. Well, that got me thinking, if we can layer this perfectly over one side, why not do a double one? So this is my double version. So to create this, I've basically made two of the cards as I showed you two last time and then turned one upside down and stuck it to the back of the first one. So there is literally two of that style of card sandwiched together to create this effect. If you open it up, you can see it's quite a large um, card actually in size. Comparing that with a 12 by 12 as such, we can see it's quite a nice size. You're looking at about 18 inches as a rough estimate on that. Um, but it's a really nice way to create a sort of gatefold with a bit of a difference. So on my gatefold with a bit of a difference, I have added lots of that lovely paper. I told you earlier about my 12 by 12 in that pad and I shoot with a really lovely glittered version of it. Well, as I said, I really should have glittered this one, but um, I didn't. So I, but I could go back and do it, I suppose. I, there's no time at present, we could go back and do it later. Uh, but definitely would like look pr quite pretty glittered as well if you wanted to. I've then layered it all on that lovely uh, colour card, which is, of course, in our card pack. If you're wondering about the measurements, by the way, for this one, this was actually on uh, a video from two weeks ago. So I will pop the description for or the link for that in the description to this video again. And I will mark it as the instructions for the card fold if you do want to know the measurements to be able to make this card. Because I know a few of you might like the idea of that. I know lots of you have been doing them already. 
And then die cut wise, we have the ornate oval on this one, which is D11. So as you can see going down on the four panels on the sides here, I've just used that middle part of our die and layered it. So we've got that really nice filigree bit with a solid part underneath. And then I've added in little butterflies on the tops of all of my panels. And then obviously in the middle one, we've gone a bit bolder because we've got a bit more room to do so. So we've gone a bit bolder and we've got both of the panels on that one too, which I think they just go in so well with the colors of the paper. And then coming out the top here, we of course have our lovely butterfly edge up, which is D8, only £10 and 19p. And of course, this is actually the rest of that bit. You remember I dropped that little um, tiny butterfly, just the one of? These, they should actually be on the ends here. So uh, this is a bit bigger, but I've cut it down so it fits in the middle of the part of my card that I wanted it to. And uh, as you can see, we have the outside white edge using the one with the holes in. And we've got the solid one with a nice embossed bit behind it. And then if we flip the card over, hopefully this might explain it a bit better what I was trying to get to earlier. Because it's all a mirror image, you can stick them back to back and create this double effect. So there is actually four different layers. I don't know if you're going to see that very well. But we have the white bit on the outside of both sides and then the two pink bits sandwiched back to back. But as a card, it actually is really lovely because you get a really nice finish on both sides of it. As I said earlier, I often find with vegetables, the front looks really lovely, but the back can look a bit messy. Well, this one's the perfect one for that because it solves that problem. And then actually on the back of my card, I've gone for one of the sentiments out of the five by five pad. I've cut it out, obviously, using my die. And then I've used another one of my um, big backing ones from that lovely on a oval to actually pop that on in the centre. And then, of course, I've decorated all of the back of it as well. It's very nice and easy to do. And it's quite nice if you do the back, because when you do fold it up on the front here, obviously you see a lot of the back panels too, so it is quite a good idea to decorate both sides of them. But it, I really like this fold, because obviously you could stand it out like that as such, giving you the sort of front-on effect of it. Or if you prefer, you could even decorate it that way and make this the front of it so it sort of comes forward at you instead. And again, when you do stack it down to send it, it would still fit in an envelope and look quite neat. So it's quite a, quite a clever fold and lots of ways you're going to be able to use that one if you like the look of it. Moving on, we have a 7x8 card. So I've gone for a bit of a rectangle this time. This is actually the first card I made for this collection this week. Uh, out of some of our new bits. So on this one, we have got the lattice frame, which is D12, and you can see, again, I've layered it in quite a few ways. I've used that lovely light minty sort of um, green color from in your card pack once again. I've added in our lovely floor, flower sprays, D7, to all four of the corners. And then I've used that little oval again, which I did mention I'd used quite a few times, just to add my little sentiment on the front there. And then in the background, we've again got that lovely butterfly edger. This time I have cut it in the middle to extend it out slightly further because as the actual die, it would have ended about there, I suppose. So I wanted it a little bit larger to go all the way across. But as we're going to pop this in the middle, it doesn't matter if it's under there, does it? Why not use a few tricks and, and extend it out a bit larger if we can? Then moving on, we have another one. This one is our 8x8 eight eight card. So this time we've gone for some more of the lovely papers out of the pads. This one is actually one of the 5x5 five five ones. So not all of them have got the big words on. So again, this one's just to show you how you can use them as a nice element to the front of your card. And if you are, I often get told I make big cards and I do make quite big cards. Um, if you do prefer to make smaller cards, if you imagine you could just have that part as the front of your card and it would look really lovely. Only I've extended it out using the different layers. You don't have to if you don't want to. If you do prefer more subtle cards, then that's certainly a way that you could do it too. Of course, this time we are looking at the ornate rectangle die. And again, I've layered my elements, changing colours this time, and actually tied it on with some ribbon. Again, going through the holes on the edges there to do that as well. And then obviously I've got one of them really lovely frame designs in the background too. I've only glittered the corners of this one. I don't have to glitter everything. That's one of the good bits with the sort of papers. You can just highlight little areas if you wish to. And then moving on, I'm going to show you a 12 by 12 page as well. Because this is using a lovely ornate square D10. And actually treating it more as a picture frame. So this time I've cut the frame out. Obviously using the outside blade. The really lovely filigree part. 
and the inside blade to make these topper cream bits. I've actually cut my photos using that lovely sort of cross style die from the middle, this outside edge bit. So they are actually cut into that shape, which is a really nice way to do that as well. Nice way to trim your photos down. And then of course, we've got a nice solid mint green base underneath it. Now the green and the purple in this one are actually pearl card and uh, not one you're gonna be getting in your card pack, obviously but a nice way to show you the different effect to actually use that die and create your scrapbooking pages too. To be honest, so many of these dies and the pages really do lend themselves to scrapbooking. So there's quite a lot you could do if you are a scrapbooker with this collection. I think you're gonna have hours of fun too. Moving on, we have another card. So this one's a bit of a different one. This is a new fold that I've sort of come up with that I quite liked. So I'm gonna explain the score bits to you in a second, but if you look at it from an aerial view, hopefully you're gonna to get to see the sort of shape that we've followed on this one. And it's quite nice because if you do wish to send it, it will collapse down flat and pop into an envelope. So, okay, I've gone a bit overboard with my big bulky flowers, but I love big bulky flowers. So you might want to pop it in a box, but it certainly does go down quite flat if you want to. And of course, you don't have to be as bold with your add-on additions as I am, if you don't wish. I also quite like the way that because it's got so many score lines in it, you can sort of stand it in different directions. It can sort of stand forward or backwards, or you can really sort of play about with that. But that's up to you and the person that receives it to how they wish to stand it. But this is just a small part that I've done to give you an idea. So your actual card this time is A4 in length. So that's the length of your A4 going that way. My card is actually 14 centimetres top to bottom to give you an idea. If you do want to pop them dies on it, you're going to need to know that. This off cut isn't that large, but it's just to show you your score lines. So you're going to pop it on your board. I'll show you one on mine just so that it makes sense, hopefully. I've only got a little board, so that's why I'm going to show you from both directions. But you're going to score your card at 7 centimetres, 10 and a half, and 14. And that will get you to the halfway point. You're then going to turn your A4 piece of card round. And once again, you're going to score at 7, 10 and a half, and 14. And by doing so, that will give you the fold that I've used for this card. So that's going to come forward in all of the right directions to give you that same standout fold part as what's on mine. Hopefully you can see that all right. Um, but lots of ways you could decorate that up and create different effects on it. On my card, obviously, I've gone all about the ornate square, which is D10 and £11 and 4p. And as you can see, this time I've gone for some nice ice white pearl card. And I've layered these going inwards on several layers. And I really like how pretty that part is in the centre of this one. Um, actually, when you look at the die, you might be a bit more... Um, sceptical of how it's going to come out but I think when it's cut it's so pretty and really really lovely and goes in so nicely with all the outer work that I think you might actually really appreciate that part and use that quite a lot I know I was pleasantly surprised with that one moving on we have another 8x8 eight eight card so this one is using lots of my layers of paper this time I have layered it three times creating different effects picking up different parts of my actual design to do that with. The good bit about having so many sheets in that pad is you're gonna be able to layer them as many times as you want to and create this effect a couple of times if you do wanna keep it quite shallow. In the middle here, I have of course gone for my lovely ornate oval, which is D11. Again, I've used the nice solid background to it and then I've layered up using different colors of the card from in our lovely card pack as well. Again, in the centre, I've used that little oval too, which comes out of the ornate rectangle, just to stamp my sentiment on. I really do like that little oval. I know it's silly, isn't it? Sometimes it's the smallest bits that impress us the most, isn't it? And I really like that. I thought that fitted in so well with all of the other dies. Whichever die you go for, I would highly recommend also going for the ornate rectangle for that and lots of other reasons, because that one is my favourite, as I confessed earlier. And then I've also added a couple of butterflies around here too, also cut out of the lovely card that comes in our A4 card pack today. Moving on, we have another 8x8 eight eight card. So this one's a bit bolder. We are using our ornate square once again, which is D10. And I've layered the first one on some acetate. I've used more of our wording. I've pixie powdered my lovely flowers down the front here, just to give you a bit of a different effect on there. 
turning over my acetate I've put another one of the solid backings on it to cover up any of the glue marks that I would have created through putting the ones on the front and then on my next one in I've got another set going on here of that same die with my lovely stamped sentiment in the middle of that and then if we flick over that page I've again covered up my work on the back using another one of the solids and then I've actually painted all of my flowers in so I've stamped and heat embossed my flowers on this one and then I've painted them in using pixie powders to give you that really lovely shimmer to the actual painting and then as a background at the very back here I've also pixie powdered my piece of card just to complement the same pixie powder in that I've done on my flowers and my sentiment so it hopefully all ties together as it sort of sits back but one of the bits I like about this one is as it actually stands and you look at it forward on or front on you get to see different elements of that really lovely ornate square come through on each part then moving on, I've got a really simple card for you. Now, we don't always want to do massive projects, do we? And sometimes we've got, especially like this one, a Get Well Soon card. Sometimes somebody falls slightly ill and you want to send them a card and you don't want to delay it for days and days. And you don't always have a chance to go and make them the biggest and best card in the world. Well, this is a really nice way to make quite a simple card, but hopefully one that looks quite elegant and easy to do. So I've used some of the papers out of the 6x6 pad this time to create my um, backgrounds. I've actually scored my card, which I'll tell you how in a moment. But I've scored it and I've cut my lovely filigree um, butterfly border out of the edge so that it is actually being used as an edgeable. I've then stuck on the reverse of it some lilac cuts uh, using the one that has all the filled in parts so that I've got that nice lilac part coming from underneath it. And this is something I didn't mention earlier, I don't think. But I quite like as well the way that the outer edge is slightly larger than the inside part. So when you do come to glue it on and try and match it up, you do, of course, have to be as exact as you can be. But it does give you a bit of wiggle room, a bit of room for manoeuvre without it having to be perfectly spot on. And then obviously behind it, we've got a couple of layers of our, our Nate oval which is d11 and 11 pounds and 4p okay so score wise for this one again i've done a little sample piece to show you just as a quickie just to give you a bit of a glimpse into this one so again this time we are a4 in length for our piece of card my actual card is 16 centimeters wide which is much wider than the off cut i'm using to show you on this bit but it's just to show you your score lines so you're going to pop it on your board you're going to score at two and a half centimeters and five centimeters from one end which if you prefer inches is actually one inch and two inches uh, and then from the other end you're going to come on and score at 12 centimeters now this will make the back of this slightly shorter than the front but i actually quite appreciate that when i'm looking at a tent style card sometimes i find it actually stands slightly better a lot of people find that um, tent cards can sort of slip down quite a lot i sometimes find that if they're not perfectly matched on both sides it can help the way it stands slightly so that's how you can create that one if you wish to do the same scores as me and then our last card today this is this one which we are six centimeters by seven and a half for your sizes and again i've gone for just one color of cardstock from in our lovely pack of card and teamed it with our lovely oyster pearl card this time i've gone for our flower spray dye which is on all four sides which is quite nice because it actually if you didn't know you might hopefully believe that's one big die which i really like that because it gives you different effects out of one die cut and different ways to use it different ideas it looks very expensive and a nice large die where it's just really four of them cut and glued together i've then of course added on lots of flowers using the nice oyster coloring and then in the middle part of course we've got our lattice frame which is d12 and 11 pounds and 4p stacked up several times with different cuts coming out of all of those and then on the front part here we of course have our lovely butterfly edger which is d8 and only 10 pounds and 19p and i've just actually folded that and sort of popped the ends ends of it underneath there so it gives me a bit of a curved out effect going across the front and of course i've added more of our colored card using the other die in that set behind it to give us that filled in effect as well now i don't think i've used the dots actually if i don't think i've got to show you them lovely dots on any of these cards but i promise i will make something shortly and 
show you something with that as well because that little dot bit's a really nice detail don't believe i've actually left that one out but uh really lovely i think you'll use it quite a lot and if you do as always if you do go for these collections or if you've gone for any of the items from our previous sunday showcases please don't hesitate to upload your creations to our facebook group which is our craft mania sunday shares Sunday Showcase shares, that's a lot of S's, uh, group, and uh, you can then share all of your ideas with everybody else as well, because we love to see what you create. I know I come along every week and waffle on for a while about what I've done, but I genuinely love to see what you've done. So if you have been using any of the products from Showcases, please don't hesitate to share them with us. So let's do a quick recap of these items, just in case there's anything that you're not too sure about, or if you didn't get a chance to write down your codes first time. So our first item in today's showcase is P1, which is your 5x5 five five pad. Should be 5 99 but is reduced to just £5.09. We then have P2, which is your 6x6 six six pad. Should be 3 99 but is reduced to £3.39p. We then have P3, which is your 7x7 seven seven pad, which should be 4 99 but is reduced to £4.24p. We then have P4, which is your 8x8 eight eight pad, this one should be £8.99, but is reduced to £7.64p. We then have P5, which is your 12 by 12 pad. This one should be £7.99, but is reduced to just £6.79p. Moving on, we have P6, which is your A4 card pack. This one should be £5.99, but is reduced to just £5.09p. Now, I would stress to you, if you are going for the pads, maybe get a couple of these. There are so many pages in them pads, you're really going to appreciate having a bit of a stash of your matching colours of card. And they really are something that goes very quickly when we do have these pads on offer. So again, get in quick if you do want the cardstock, because obviously some people may cherry pick the size of their pads, but virtually everybody goes for the card pack. So warning, that will go quickly. Your mega bundle for your papers, if you do wish to go for all of that collection, that will give you all of your lovely pads and a pack of the card as well. That collection should cost you £37.94p, but your offer price for this week is just £29.99. Moving on to your dies, we of course you can purchase them separately. We have D7, which is your flower spray, should be £7.99, but is reduced to £6.79p. We then have D8, which is your butterfly border, should be eleven ninety nine, but is reduced to just ten pounds and nineteen p. We then have your lovely ornate rectangle, which should be twelve ninety nine, but is reduced to eleven pounds and four p. We then have D10, which is your ornate square, should be twelve ninety nine, but is reduced to eleven pounds and four p. We then have the lovely D11 ornate oval, should be twelve ninety nine, but it's reduced to eleven pounds and four p. And then lastly, we have D12, which is your lattice frame, should be twelve ninety nine, but it's reduced to eleven pounds and four p. Now your mega die bundle, if you just like the look of the dies and you want to get all of your dies in one easy go, why not get this one? And again, you do save a bit more than buying them individually. So this set should be £71.94p, but your offer price is just £57.99. Moving on, why not go for the super mega bundle? I know, it's incredibly tempting, isn't it? Why not have everything in one easy click or order system? Go for the super mega bundle that will give you all of the pads and the card and all of your lovely dies. Should be £109.88p, but your offer price this week is just £86.99. Now, once again, your offers do end at 5pm on Saturday the 30th of March, 2019 so please do get in before that date if you do want to take advantage of the offer prices once again these items may still be in stock after that date but they will have gone back up to full price to get them where you can now talking about how to get your items you can of course use the codes we've given you to order via facebook instagram twitter or youtube and we can hold them in store for you for up to seven days or 5 p.m on the following saturday whatever comes first or, of course, you can also um, order them on our website. Everything will be pictured individually and in the different offer bundles as well. And you can pop on there and click and collect either from Beaches and Cream in Lowestoft or Craft Mania in Great Yarmouth. Or we can send them to you anywhere in the world. So, to begin with, UK shipping is really easy. If you spend over £35, UK PMP is completely free. If you spend less than £35, PMP is capped at just £2.75. If you're shopping with us from abroad, 
no problem at all. We literally send loads of parcels every week all around the world. This is again really easy to do. Your shipping is capped at just £10. You cannot spend more than £10 on it. If your shipping costs more than £10, here at Craftmania we will actually pay that for you. If it costs less than £10, we will refund you the difference. Now in complete transparency, the average parcel tends to take about two weeks to reach you and costs around 15 to 16 pounds, meaning that you will pay the maximum 10 pound postage and we will pay the remainder. So we can't be fairer than that, can we? If you have any questions about how any of that works or any questions at all about anything I've shown you today, please don't hesitate to get in contact with us. You can find the link to my personal Facebook in the description to this video. You can, of course, pick up the phone and talk to us in store any time that we're open. Or, of course, you can drop us a message on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter or Facebook. We are always here to help you in any way that we can, truthfully. So please don't hesitate to get in contact if you would like to. All of the cards from today will, of course, be put onto our Pinterest page. So if you do wish to pop on there and pin them, so you can go back to them at a later date, you can do. It's a really good way to keep them in your memory bank as such and not forget about all these lovely ideas you can hopefully do. Or, of course, if you're watching us on YouTube, we would love it if you will give us a thumbs up and a share, as well as a subscribe. If you haven't yet, click subscribe please do. We've broke our 1,500 subscriber target, but we now have much higher targets we're after. So if you haven't hit subscribe yet, please do. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I truly hope you've enjoyed it. And I'll be back next Sunday with another new Sunday showcase for you. Bye for now. Bye-bye.